Try out this easy watercolor seascape to express yourself and to take yourself to the beach when you can't physically go there. Seascapes are a classic subject matter in painting. You can find so many artists that have tried their hand at creating seascapes, whether it's super detailed or it's really loose like the painting I'm gonna show you how to do today. English artist William Turner is a great artist to look up for inspiration. His very simple watercolor landscapes almost become abstract because of how simple they are. My personal inspiration for my artwork today is my dad, who is my favorite painting buddy. He watercolor paints everywhere he goes, whether it's sitting on the beach relaxing or at the Grand Canyon or a national park. He taught me to be creative and to never go on a trip without my watercolors. Since I'm cooped up at home and I can't travel and visit, this is in your honor, dad. Thanks for always encouraging me to paint. If you love to make art or learn about art, don't forget to subscribe. For my seascape today, I'm using an inexpensive set of watercolors and I'm using a reference image from my phone that I took in Daytona Beach last summer. I'm using a nice thick brush and I have a small one that I actually don't end up using and you'll need something like a paper towel to blot with. I'm using watercolor paper, but you can use whatever you have. Starting with your sky, put a very light wash of blue. A wash is a large area of water with a little bit of color mixed in. With watercolor, starting light is the way to go because there's no erasing and watercolor layers, but you can't really remove it once it's dried. Notice I'm adding very slight diagonals in my sky and I'm gonna blend a little bit of violet in the top. I am using a reference image and on the day that I'm painting this, the image, it was um, about to rain. And so I wanna capture a little bit of that darkness at the top. I'm using a lot of water at this point and anything that you wanna remove, you can blot with a paper towel. You do wanna keep white areas in your sky because that's going to represent your clouds and there's no white paint with this watercolor. You can overlap and layer to get your sky as vibrant as you would like, but my rule with watercolor is keep it simple. The beauty of watercolor is that you're letting your colors glide and blend with the water and you don't need to overthink it or overdo it. I'm keeping my sky really simple, sticking to my slight diagonals and leaving areas white. I'm going to leave my sky alone and move on to my horizon where the sky meets the water. Luckily with the seascape, you're gonna be using very similar colors because water is reflective. I'm doing the same thing in the water that I did with my sky, slight diagonals of blue. To create a really beautiful water um, color with, with watercolors, I like to blend green with my blue at the same time so it creates this really gorgeous turquoise color. Just like with the sky, it's really important to leave areas of white in your water. You want to create the look of waves and in order to do that, leave some long white um, diagonal lines. I'm gonna put just a little snippet of sand in the bottom left corner of my seascape. And to make it look realistic, don't just use bright yellow, but make it a little bit more subtle by starting with a wash of either yellow or brown and then mixing it together. If you put too much of one color, just blot it and it will seep into your water if you're doing this wet on wet. And that's okay. The sand would overlap with the water, the horizon would be reflected, um, the sky would be reflected into the water. So a little bit of overlapping is okay. At this point, I want my horizon to really stand out from my sky so there's a clear definition of where the water is and where the sky is. Um, my sky is still a little bit wet, so you can see the colors are blending or bleeding into each other. So I'll let it dry a little bit longer and give my waves a little bit more detail. With the tip of my brush, I'm adding a second layer of a darker blue to give it that nice vibrant wave movement that's so mesmerizing about a beach landscape. Depending on your reference image or what part of the world you're painting, you might have really crushing dynamic waves or you might have a sea that looks like glass. I want something in between and this is a landscape I'm painting of Florida. And Florida sometimes has really massive waves and sometimes it's more chill and laid back. 
I'm doing a combination of green and a combination of blue. And because I'm painting wet on wet, you can see it blending into my waves. So I'm gonna do a few layers. I'm gonna go back into my horizon a little bit, but really to get contrast, it needs to dry for a little bit before you do your second layer. Now that my sky has a little bit more time to dry, I'm gonna see if I can get that clean horizon line that I'm looking for. Watercolor is all about layering, but I think working wet on wet is such a great way to do a seascape because you're painting water with water. So the way the water interacts and moves really captures the essence of a seascape. Hmm, at this point, I think it's best to let it dry for maybe 30 minutes, and then I'm gonna go back and add some last minute texture to my waves up front. Okay. So now that everything has settled a little bit, I can add a layer of detail in the front of my painting to give it more depth and dimension. I have way less water on my brush because I want this color to be more opaque and I wanna have more control over it, not just random flows like I did with my first layer. As an artist, I always struggle with keeping things simple and knowing when to be finished. I tend to always overwork things, so I'm really trying to go slow and just give it just enough detail so it's not overworked, but it has just that satisfying amount of detail where it's still pretty loose, almost even abstract, but just enough so you know exactly what I'm trying to paint. This painting is all about simplicity and color. I'm not adding beach umbrellas, I'm not adding palm trees, dolphins, a shark attack in the background. I just wanna focus on color blending in an almost abstract, simplified beach landscape. Here's the finished product, and I love that this took me, besides the dry time, maybe only 15 minutes to complete. They're super easy, super fun, and I might try this again doing a sunset or a sunrise. I might not be able to physically go to the beach right now, but I sure can paint someplace I'd love to be.